In our society, it talks about the Trinity. And that's, that's lost in birth. It's lost in, um, it's, well, it's lost in life. It, it might even be lost in midwifery. I'm not really so sure that even the midwives get that. The uh, mother and the father and the child. When they are there, this is a soul coming in. This is the divine. And I've said before that what an awesome job. People need to be educated uh, and, and healed as far as how they were violated and then educated on what is birth, what is the psychological and life significance and the psychological state of the mother and father when the human is being conceived. I'm the big sister of a home birth baby, and I'm a home birth daddy. If we all have an understanding of how big that is, and that it does imprint on the brain that grows in this creation, then we can heal every problem in the world. The rough handling, yeah, I, let me, I'll put it to you this way. When I am in someone else's home, especially someone um, that is in their 60s and above, that has had more life experience than I have, and they're telling me about things or they're showing me something, you pick up certain things that have no real significance as ever to that person and you touch them in ways like they're a relic or that they're the finest china. It's a matter of respect. When you pick up something that is important to someone else, even if it's not fragile, it could be his, his trophy that's you know, made of brass and wood and solid as a rock, you know? But you, you handle it gently and you touch it where you almost don't want to put fingerprints on it. You give something that means something to someone else, you give it respect in the way you handle it, in the way you meet eye contact with them. I do feel a lot of times that's not what you get in the hospital. This is, this is now the most precious thing in your life. And to have it just removed around, why can't they give, 
I'm not, I'm not saying they're harming the child. That's a question. But all I do know is that I want them at that moment to give this new being respect. For me, give me the respect to say, this is now the most important thing in my life. Can you treat it as the most fragile thing in the world? I want them to give, give me the respect, to have the empathy. I know they've done this a hundred times. I know this is just another birth, but it's my first. I'm very supportive of having fathers present the entire time, and I even when and sometimes I'll even let the fathers help deliver their babies. Okay, and we put the hands on it. When the baby's arms come out, then I have the mothers reach down and grab the babies by the arms and pull their own baby up onto their chest. So they they both partake in it, and then the father's sitting there, kind of like doesn't know what to do. And I say, "Touch your baby." And he said, "Do I have to wash my hands?" No, it's your baby. Touch your baby. You know, it's not going to break. It's not fragile. You know, and they all and they get into it, and suddenly they're into it, and it's it needs to be lauded and encouraged. For All fathers, I uh, came to uh, be participants in this whole thing, uh, and to love myself, yes, through it all. Yes, no matter whatever happened, no matter how I'm ever seen. I would remember now the whole orientation of the child what is true and the and brain itself is becoming oriented around the environment provided mostly by mother and father. I am a beautiful expression of the one love. Yes, I'm a beautiful expression of the one. That's why it's true to say to the parents, you are the architects of your baby's brain in the womb. No doctor is going to do it. They can't reach it. The parents are there every day. My dad was, he was... In the, we can wait was, too. It's okay. He wasn't in the waiting room or anything. But I never talked to him. Like, what's it like? What do you do? How do you? What what is what is what is a person's role? I mean, like giving birth. Like, obviously, you know what's expected of you. But how do you support? How do you show emotional support? Is a, a question that's never really asked. You know, the fathers would welcome training if you would just give it to them. They want to be full participants and it would be better for the baby and if you think making better babies is the way to make a better world you better start you know including the fathers because in the beginning they're half the equation I am a beautiful expression from the beginning of the one love you know, the, the prenatal experience is so foundational that's the important thing to impart that the fundamental idea of any growing baby is to adapt because it has to adapt it has to be ready it has nine months to go from a couple of cells to a, a, a hopefully a two-legged two-armed being with a head and five senses and a digestive system and so forth and it has to come in ready to adapt in, in a very fragile and intimate state so that the baby is constantly listening tuning in Every emotion that the mother has, the baby has the peptides flowing through its own body on a chemical basis. Its consciousness is tuned in. It, it may not know the words, but it knows the feelings and the experience. It begins to get the adaptive environment of the family. That the same kinds of mechanisms of nutritional thrift that a fetus develops around lack of, of nutritional resor uh, you know, resources, like food or oxygen, another very big one for the mother's smoking, the fetus can also develop these mechanisms of relational thrift, you might put it that way, that, oh, there's, there's no one really there for me. I'm, I'm kind of on my own here. And that's how early that dynamic can start. 
The parents are there every day, shaping, forming that brain. Now, most parents never thought of that. Is the family expressed their heart? Do they deny that? Are they an angry family? Are they tight? Are they weak? Are they dense? How does the family hold this in their body? Because that's the style that allows that family to survive in that milieu. Babies learn this. Then, of course, at birth you have that separation, which then just recapitulates that earlier perceived sense of disconnection. But once, if you could trust that idea and just go for it, it means that every day you're loving your child, welcoming your child, feeding the mother and protecting the mother so she gets the best nutrition, the best supplies, adequate supplies for the construction of the baby's body. And this is why it's incredibly formative <laughs> and influential all these days between conception and birth, every day. Um, you know, you see the old 60s and 70s sitcoms where the father is just out there pacing, smoking cigarettes, and then somebody just bursts out and tells them, and then they get an opportunity later to go to the glass and see them all lined up, and a nurse comes and shows the baby. Um, you know, you laugh at all of that, and I'm thankful that we're not in that place anymore, but I do still feel a certain amount of you got to be over here, sir. We, we're, things have changed. We'll allow you in the room, but that's about the best you can do. Then they just, you know, made the call of, okay, we've got a problem here. We've got to do a C-section. She's rushed off, and I am out in the hall. You know, now I'm doing the pacing after all. I am on the other side of the glass. That experience of being there at the time of the birth of that magical moment when the child comes into being, um, to experience the wife's, the mother's excitement on seeing the baby, and the bonding that takes place really between the three people, um, is really quite incredible. And to not have that experience, um, is a definite loss. He's a dad. He's, he's, he's the complement to the mom. And he has his role as dad to fulfill. Okay. Ooh, I am a beautiful expression of the one love. I am a beautiful expression of the one. You know, in the history of humanity, and now they're finding human remains 20 million years old, um, and it'll keep evolving. As they, you know, dig deeper, they find more and more history of civilization, probably much older than that. But let's just take recorded history, the last 16,000 years, 20,000 years. Children were born at home. They weren't born in hospitals. And humanity has survived and has moved on and is evolving. And it has done this, almost all of this, not in hospitals, you know, but in home births had nothing to do with Western medicine whatsoever. Now, Western medicine, you know, has its strengths. In emergency care, it's second to none. But in some areas, it's devolved because they look at it, I think, too much with the eye of profit and profitability as opposed to what is the greater good and what is the real true need, you know, not only of the human body but of the human soul. Medical... The medical industry doesn't address that any way, anywhere whatsoever. But if we're honest with ourselves, we'll admit that too many fathers are also missing. Too many fathers are MIA. And we got in the car and we went to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, they took her away. And they took her and my baby away from me. And I was sent off somewhere else and I had to 
assert myself back into the into the system. But when that birth happened, I lost a connection with her that I never regained. I feel an inner tremble because of going through that process and that no one can take that from us. For sure. The connection I have with my son from being there and watching him come out and being one of the first people to hold him is without a doubt our connection that nobody can take away from us. And my daughter, her head came out and it's funny, just as her head popped out and I looked at her mom, I was like, yeah, I didn't want to if I should cry or jump up for joy, but I was focused like, okay, now's not the time. At the other end of the spectrum, there are those people for whom having a child is really a spiritual experience. There's something sacred about the creation of a new life and about welcoming that new life into the world. You know, we have such a sterile environment and, you know, it's, it's, birth is a lot, you know, at least in my experience, I mean, it's a transition. I mean, we're transitioning from the womb world to this world and, and it's a time of joy and we've made it such a sterile, a sterile environment. I mean, where there's no interaction. I mean, I don't know how you would like it, but I don't know if you'd like it if you woke up and there was, you know, bright fluorescent lights shining right in your face and, you know, and these strange people with masks standing above you. I mean, it's that's a sterile environment. And we have, I mean, and, and, and that's because we're all afraid that somebody's gonna get sick. You know, we gotta relook at the way we, we handle birth and even death. I mean, you know, we make that such a sterile thing. If we're alive, we're gonna have pain, we're gonna live, we're gonna die. Birth and death become part of the whole process. It is the, I mean, birth, going coming into the world which they've already been in because they've been in the mom, but coming into this world from, the, from this universe into this universe and going out of it, I mean, those are the two most profound times of our lives. You know, we've been given birth for years and years and years, you know, and hospitals cause more illness than, than you know, than anything else. So, I mean, you know, we got to relook at the way we, we handle birth and even death. That it has been broken for a long time that women and babies and birth, this is not, this is not since I was born or you were born or anyone. This is from time. But if I had to pick a place, I would probably have to say, or I would say, the Inquisition in Europe, where a certain Catholicism went after the goddess, went after the feminine principle, uh, specifically after women, targeted women for death and persecution. You know, my, my paternal lineage comes from that area in Germany where there were whole towns where all the women were killed. Um, to place a male dominant role on a society uh, which has completely created an imbalance that's everywhere. I felt that, I saw that. I experienced that, that is my deep anger. So that's, if, if I had to choose a place, uh, Janelle, that's where I would go. I would probably say the Inquisition because the damage that that did, not only to those societies and uh, countries, but also to the psyche of humanity, um, cannot be underestimated in any way, shape, or form. Women, because it is so powerful, because we do have this unbroken lineage, because we carry our grandchildren in our bodies.
because we have this power this to bring forth this next generation. We are there at that moment. We choose what that moment is. The feminine needs a very responsible partner. Now that partner has to be the male energy. Right now, the male energy is completely out of balance. Even within itself, it's completely out of balance. That, that uninterrupted line, that uninterrupted lineage that comes through that cord, that history, we have to accept and we have to acknowledge. I think it has been, been acting out uh, everywhere. Uh, we have created cultures of war and generations of war uh, economies based on war, you know, where it's all about war. And this relates to birth? I, I think so. Um, you know, here are children coming into the world and essentially the first thing that happens is, you know, they probably feel like they're being attacked. Tubes shoved up their nose and suction things down their throat and their nose inspected or mutilated being given vaccine shots. They have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, the father is usually behind the glass or not even in the room. They're in there with their babies, but there's some invisible wall that they um, are having difficulty reaching across. He's, if he's saying anything, you know, it's being overridden by nurses and a doctor uh, who the child, the baby doesn't know. All right. We know about the two common sorts of understandings of, of the sympathetic nervous system. That's fight or flight in an overwhelming situation. There's a third option, which is sort of a, 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 a safeguard option, and that's the freeze response or the immobility response. In a different situation, like if we were just sitting here right now and somebody came along and did that to my child, there's no way I'd ever let him touch him like that. But when you're in the hospital and it's their rules and their turf and you're, you know, lacking food and sleep and everything else. In that situation, tremendous energies are built up in the system of the person, but they're sort of internalized as something that never really gets completed in terms of bringing energy and blood out to the muscles and, and, and fully mobilizing a fight or flight response. And so the freeze response, I think, is often happening with the dad in a hospital situation. She's talking to the baby. Uh huh. You can run from the doctor, but you can't, can't hide, hide from, from the, the nurse. nurse. And did you hear the father, gentle please? Uh -uh. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh. Run from the doctor, but you can't hide from the nurse. There you go. There you go. All right. Time to go to mommy. Hey, beautiful. Time to go, mommy. Now. We're gonna wrap up. Um, and the mother is being cared to, but she's apart from the baby. I mean, you know, in hindsight, looking at this, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a profound um, contradiction of love and tenderness. Profound.
and then they're sent home at 24 hours or 72 hours. How the heck is she supposed to know that she does know anything? Because if you leave a mama baby uninterrupted, and maybe after they're nursing and kind of messing around for a while, you might take a look and maybe make, okay, let's get you a little more belly to belly. And then you look away and let the mom figure out what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? That mom knows that she figured it out, not that somebody told her and interrupted her. And uh, it really is food for thought as to, you know, God, what are we doing? And that I have power. I don't, she's going to have the power. I'm leaving. Mama's no, not me. You know, if you don't interrupt them, then the mama baby works. And if you do interrupt them, the mama baby doesn't work so hot. I think at that time we need some silence and some quietness and just allow the mom, usually the mom and dad are crying and it's just so the most precious, holiest time in the whole universe. Oh, very kind. Oh, Tyree, you're doing it. Jessica, you're doing it. Okay, all right, Betty. Up to Mama. You can see it clearly there too. But even when it's slow, when it's a, you know, gentle, that was not gentle. And just allow that mama baby, and in fact, the mama daddy baby, but I like calling it a mama baby because they're not separate. They're still connected so strongly. Just allow that mama baby unit to be left alone for a few minutes. That part was not gentle and that was the most important moment. That was the most important moment of all that work I did and he did and she, Clay did. All that work of, of conception and growing this baby and putting intention around how we were going to birth her. And it was perfect up until that moment when this woman, and even she supported us, I feel, in a, in, during the labor. I hadn't looked in her eyes and I was just like trying to take in that she was out of me. And she, uh, but I think that that was rushed because if she was down here, still in the water, uh, her father and I could have, who knows how it would have went. It would have been either, I have a feeling she may have looked in his eyes first, and I'm okay with that. You know, whatever it would have been, but it would have been the father, the mother, and the baby. And the father, I don't believe in this, that fathers and men have no place in birth. <laughs> they, the baby, the humans wouldn't be there. It takes the vagina and the penis, the egg and the seed. Later found out that she was annoyed by some things that we did during the labor, the way we prayed, the way I moaned, the way he moaned with me, the Baha'i prayers we would chant. But that's ours. I don't, it doesn't matter. And she didn't show that that bothered her but her energy was there. Even though I was just in another world, so even if she was acting annoyed or behind my back rolling her eyes, I didn't know that. We did it! We did it! Oh, three of us! Oh, 
tell them about too many movies. Do you want to read So we're being quiet and just allowing the mama baby to kind of say howdy and smell each other and um, have that moment. I'm watching for bleeding. I'm checking that the baby's breathing. I'm doing the APGARs, but I'm unobtrusive. I don't need to do big things to check if a baby's okay or not okay. Her best judgment as the doctor for the rest, possible respiratory needs, I think she said, or I don't remember what she said. In that moment, she thought she needed to get her out of the water to make sure she was getting air or something. But I'm thinking, haven't you seen birth as we know it? What about how she came out? Why? What about, what, what, why did she need to be pulled immediately out of the water? And it was because he, it was because of how she felt about the father. You can run from the doctor, but you can't hide from the nurse. There's, that says, that's about the nurse's relationship with the doctor. And she's putting the baby in the middle of that. I mean, what, what place, that, that has no place there. And so with peop, who, whatever human beings are present at this immense, indescribable moment, which is birth, which we've all been born, obviously, if we're here. It was about her. You know, it, what, where did that come from? You know, that, what she said had nothing to do with the baby, the mom, and the dad. The more human beings that are, are created in, in gentleness and respect and allowed to come in at the time and in the way that they are meant to, meant to by their source and by their own self and power and by their mother's power. Hopefully we can rise above that and begin to have something that comes closer to bringing the father in and having the father be a part of the process to somehow of training the personnel. I think we need more education and that education needs to come from a very holistic, baby-centered connection focus. It's rare that they, there is a consciousness of how the sanctity of the birth and the experience for the mother, the baby, and the, and the father, that family configuration, whatever, whoever they may be. The more human beings that, that are created that are like this, then we can get to a place where, yes, midwife or doula is present, grandmother or grandfather can be present, sister or brother can be present, sister or brother or sisters or brothers of the baby coming in can, can be present. But all these people will be whole in their masculine and feminine and whole in their self as a human being and will know how to carry themselves energetically. I think it really all starts with the mother baby. And I think if you have a mother who the baby, the baby comes out and she is the one who picks the baby up there are no hats, no bulbs, no other hands. She brings the baby up and the babe, what they do naturally 
people are astounded when they see what human birth really looks like. As we move towards this way of birth, they will have the opportunity by this new soul coming in to do their own healing work from their birth. So these new humans coming in, and the more we realize about the significance of conception and gestation and birth, all, every new human that comes in provides an opportunity for more healing of the humans that are already here to honor this, this new life. I will figure out my own masculine and feminine. I will know why it's important to move myself out of the way if I am going to be present for this incredible occurrence. Today, I'm sorry. All right. Sound good about me? He's beautiful. Sound good about me now? So while you're a fresh parent and you're lightly coddling the baby, not even wanting to depress its flesh so much that it would it percolate a drop of sweat, they are taking your baby, they are grabbing it by their feet, they are flipping it over, they are applying ointments, they are doing their job and they are doing it quickly and they are doing it under heat lamps and the baby's naked and the baby's crying and, you know, and they're just doing their thing. Everybody has individual rights and yet we treat our newborns in, in such a way that we really don't honor them uh, or the family. It's just, it's remarkable. Um, it's, it's really quite a contradiction. And you sit there and you can realize that, oh, this is your job day in and day out. And some of them are at the end of their shift, you know, and we all know how it's like to get off at the end of work and you just don't want to be there anymore, man, you know. And, you building houses, and yeah, that wall may not be straight, but oh, I'll do it tomorrow, or I don't even care, right? Just put it up, you know? Just, just put the burger on the plate, let's sell it, come on, let's go, you know? So people are doing that with your child. <laughs> that's, that's part of the hospital experience, you know? Not a giver or a taker, just a witness. Your energy, if it's given sh and it's needed to be given, should only be by the consent of the baby first, through the mother's voice, through the father's permission. And until midwives and doulas and obstetricians and nurses are healed and the whole system of how we birth in, in especially these industrialized nations with hospitals and but even other places in the world may do violations they don't know they're doing. Then we will know that we can trust the mother and the father that we, we will know that the baby is communicating with its seed and its egg and its source. And because we'll be healed as midwife or doula or doctor or nurse or grandmother or friend or sister or brother, we'll, we will never violate. And let's say, and I think the more this happens in layers over the next decades and, and centuries, that uh, peace will be because it's 
It's so simple. You just it's really beautiful, though, the layers that will happen through all the new humans coming in, but it's a process of learning, and people have to be educated. But what I was going to say is that the more this happens in the way that it's meant to happen, the less, the less interventions will be necessary. Maybe I just presumed from your, our conversations and your work that you also see the baby as sacred. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Babies are sacred. It's all sacred. Life is sacred. We really need to wake up and, and look at this as a sacred time. It is the most sacred time in our lives. Material civilization that we have now is not complete, just like the equality of men and women is not complete without the divine civilization that's in place. Because if they don't work together, techn technology will run rampant, rampant, and we'll have more things that kill us than heal us. You know, right now they're charging for C-sections, they're charging this for this, they're charging this for this. Pharmaceutical reps come in and say, you know, doctors give this and you give this. And so it's so corrupt. It, it's, it's very corrupt. They have filled themselves with self-imposed loneliness, which is why they can't connect, which only generates more anger, more separation, more rage, uh, which, which in turn creates more violence, okay, because there's a lack of respect for life when you completely disconnect from it, regardless of your reasons. So, but you know, there's so many possibilities because once people start understanding that, that you can actually make more, make more money or whatever it is, whatever your motivation is, by having healthy families and by not having malpractice suits and not having this, it all comes around. But it, it, it takes, you're going to have to look at the long-term vision instead of immediate gratification. I think we need an understanding of that unbroken lineage. We need to accept and acknowledge that it's been suppressed and oppressed for a very long time and we need to accept who we all are right here and right now. It's about the institution of that family which is everything that's the, ma the macrocosm is in the microcosm. If we forget that we serve, that each of us serve that family, uh, that that's a soul, that each of us are souls, even the doctors. I think in many regards, the feminine principle is beginning to stand up and push back against the male. And this is a good thing. This is a good thing. However, what's important is the acknowledgement of both sides through this process. The crisis is here, and, and it's coming. And, you know, I sincerely hope that, you know, we can get through it. I would say that it's coming around. You know, we have, we have, we have been led by a male-dominated society for quite some time, and what's happening is, is one of the things in our faith background is the equality of men and women. That's also the equality of masculine and feminine virtues in the world is prevalent. So we're having a whole paradigm shift to where men can be compassionate, they can be loving, they can be understanding, they can be all these things that normally was taboo. It's what has to happen is that um, the masculine has to redefine itself. Um, clearly, society has it wrong because it's not working. It's just not working. We are human, you know, like the old Indian, you know, chiefs used to say, is, you know, we're not human beings having a spiritual 
life. We're spiritual beings trying to have a human life. And it may be that we need to go back to the Native Americans, to the indigenous people, and ask them for help. We didn't listen. We persecuted them. We genocided them. We broke all of our treaties and words with them. And it's, com it's coming back on us. And, um, you know, maybe that's a place to start. That we need to go back to, to the indigenous people and ask them for help in redefining our role in society. Because they had it down. They really did. They had the wisdom. It's, it's that, that, that moment that she is, that she is an individual entity, that she's come onto this planet and that she exists as herself. And to experience that moment that she becomes her. Ah, oh, all. Moment of all is a beautiful term, yes. It's our responsibility as a society to do everything possible to make sure that that is protected. What would be really great is that as the, the, as the energy shifts, as the feminine principle begins to find more strength um, and more movement in the balancing of society, that it remains open to compassion um, and to listening uh, and to forgiveness. Um, Because I don't think placing blame and I don't think fighting against a system is that beneficial. I think working to create a new system and working to educate people now in what we know is the way to move it forward and it's going to take a long time. It's It's, it's all about balance. It's all about finding that center point. Um, it's not about extremes. Extremes, no matter where they are, they're always destructive. So um, that's what I would hope would be the positive uh, result of, of this change. That first and foremost, we need more people who understand the physiologic process of birth and how to keep it safe and protected. And, and I think that that begins with more people being educated about it. That's what I say when I think we need more people. And, and no, I mean, do I think we need more overworked obstetricians that are, or, and family doctors and, and midwives that are, that are fighting against a system and that are feeling pushed down and scared and that are, all of those things, no. I don't think there's any perfect practitioner, but I think they need to be trained in a different way. I think that people need to be educated. They need to be educated about what you're talking about. They need to be educated about the sacredness of birth and protecting the mother-baby bond. And I think that that needs to be a core part of the education of midwives and doulas and, and anyone who's present at birth. I absolutely do. I think it needs to be a part of the standard curriculum. I think that I think we need more education, and that education needs to come from a very holistic, baby-centered connection focus. And, and, the, and the male principle, has to step up. It has to be honest enough that it can look at itself and say, my God, what are we doing? That infant, mother-infant separation is so important for the development of aggressiveness in a culture that that has to be controlled by the experts. Look at the path we're on and project itself like the Native Americans used to teach. They would, they would uh, try to see seven generations in advance 
uh, based on the decisions that they would make for the tribe. They would look seven generations. Is this a good idea to do this, to make this type of change? If Western society could honestly do that, I think they would see something that was so horrific that it would shock them out of the coma that they're in of violence. It may be that in times of peace that leaving mothers and babies together is what we need so that we can be peaceful, but in times of war, since we have to raise a warrior generation, we need to separate them, and so that that may need to stay in the hands of the elders so that even subconsciously they may be controlling that. Because this isn't going to end well if we continue to propagate war, death, destruction, suppression, uh, tyranny, slavery. It isn't going to work. So we're having a whole paradigm shift to where men can be compassionate, they can be loving, they can be understanding, they can be all these things that normally was taboo. And the same thing with the institutions. They have to switch or it is time for them to perish. So we were talking about the African American community and how it's a canary. And out of this has emerged, if if having a, an empowered birth at home with a woman who knows her body and is supported, has the greatest care, and she's allowed to follow her body and her instincts, if this can change the lives so dramatically of African American men, imagine what it can do in our society for a man to be empowered by his baby's birth. Just by being it, it's healed us so much um, by sacrificing the time and singing and dancing and uh, putting her to sleep. And so it's it's really healed both of us. And, it, and right now, internally, I feel there's a, it's a the, the, the feeling that I can feel on the inside is like my, it's like my body is not really blood. It's just like a buoyancy is what I feel just sharing that to you. So that's powerful. But this right here is copper to go. Come on. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. How we supposed to know what y'all been told? But this right here is copper to go. They don't know the half in the left. What? Affecting the craft. Made a million Yo. so please do the math. Yeah, but my will so, so straight is me. She don't be messing around with them clowns that frown. She do get down and expound these nouns like rounds with renown that is down. Crowds dig her sound. Best in my class come the masses crown pound for pound. Been rapping for years, but to uh, honey want to break through. <laughs> but she's white. That's right. Well, treat me like a break. Long overdue, the whiskey true was not in time to the years of analysis. <laughs> Polishing her debut. Like paralysis, we gonna change, change the world view. I'm not a one who wonder, and this is not a drive. We could run through with the revenue because I'm trying to do something. And you can miss me with 
Yeah. Whoop de doo. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. I was hoping the fuck show me gold. This right here, it's gonna make it go. Come on, I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you've been told. I was hoping the fuck show me gold. That's the father's role is from the beginning to have his heart open wide so the baby has a place in his heart to be safe and to and, and to learn how it is we deal with this world. So yeah. the last part, the last key to that little puzzle is that the way we transform that pain is by doing something about it. And so this is the work. And and we are the genera not only are the, we the generations alive today who carry the pain, we're the generations alive who also have the gift of transforming that pain and bringing this to an end. You know, the fathers would welcome training if you would just give it to them. They want to be full participants and it would be better for the baby. And if you think making better babies is the way to make a better world, you better start, you know, including the fathers because in the beginning, they're half the equation. From the beginning. That is exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because yes, we have rights when we go into a hospital, but often we don't know our rights. And just as we have rights, that baby has rights. 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 And who is the one to determine what those rights of that baby are? The parents. So if the parents don't feel empowered by knowing their own rights and by knowing the own rights of their baby, we can't leave it up to strangers that are working in a hospital. Uh, you know, while you're pregnant or while your wife is pregnant, man, dude, you better get going because you're, it's a big deal. And, and it can be the most remarkable thing too because the more you learn about this stuff then you realize uh, what an opportunity you have with a young human being and the potential that that child all of them I don't care who they are the potential of these children if they're treated kindly and with respect and 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 dignity and honor and uh, you know, and love all the way, you know. Uh, if we do do that, man, they're capable of doing things that nobody could even imagine. We're the ones who must guard the sacredness of their entrance into life. We are the ones. It has to be us. We as everyone. 
where there once was wounding. Oh, I would see the light shine through. Namaste, the light in me sees the light in you. Oh, find a way, oh, find a way, oh, find a way to me and let that light find a way to you. Oh, mercy, mercy, oh, mercy. Can you find a way now to come on through? Oh, mercy, mercy, mercy. Let me feel you. Let me feel you. Oh, I have walked the world a long enough time to know that there are things that need to be shown. To help us see that there are other ways and other days and other times that we can come home. So I'll ask myself. Well, the choice was made up to whether you wanted to or not, but when we got married, he said, for better or for worse. And I wouldn't want to be in anywhere else in case of trouble came. And I find it today that they're not quite as excited about having a child. It may not be the same father or the mother. I see them in church and they just, you know, they don't seem to care whether they got them or not. So you were excited? You weren't? I'm just asking you. Well, I'm asking you, weren't you? Was I excited to be born or was I excited to have children? Both. Sure. Well, like I never got that out of her. <laughs> well, I have my rights, too. <laughs> You're all up about the Constitution, huh? Well, the, the Constitution gives us the right to get married, it gives us the right to live in America and have the freedoms in. Why should our freedoms be taken away from us when we have a child born? Bring us all back home. How much, I mean, what are we supposed to give up? Well, we're not alone And we can be much kinder Simply a reminder Yes, we can be much kinder And let the mercy through Can be much kinder Let the mercy through We can be much Bigger than me It's bigger than you It's bigger than any one of us Somehow we all know it's true that it's bigger than me It's bigger than you It's gonna take all of us To see this through Bigger than all of us 
us ever have seen before But somehow we know that we can restore What's been needed for a long time But now we are here Needed for so long But have no fear That the heart of the healing Is oh so near Bigger than all of us Bigger than me Bigger than all of us We came here to see That the heart of the healing is the heart of the matter And that's the only way we're gonna find our clue That the heart of the healing is the heart of the matter It's true But somehow we will find what's true The heart of the healing is the heart of the matter Is the heart of the situation It's the place where we gonna see The healing of a nation It's a celebration Cause it's bigger than me And it's bigger than you And it's bigger than all of us together Yes, it's bigger than me, and it's bigger than you, and it's bigger than all of us together. Yes, it's bigger than me, and it's bigger than you, and it's bigger than all of us together. Cause when love comes around Then we know that we're found And we know that this love it lasts forever Cause it's bigger than me And it's bigger than you And it's bigger than all of us he had to be taken the forceps, so they thought that uh, this one would be too. Knew what labor felt like, and I knew she was coming. I could feel she was coming. So he called the nurse, and she told me to calm down. I was getting hysterical. So after she left, then I, either they kept on going, and I told him the baby's coming. So he ran down to get her, and by the time... He got back up. She was born, and she was laying there on the bed, you know, kicking and moving around. And I said, now look and see if she ain't here. <laughs> yeah, the first time, <laughs> the first time I told him to look, he didn't believe me either. And I said, you just look, because I had reached down and I could feel the hair on her head she'd come that far so I told him I says now you look and he did that's when he went flying looking for the nurse 
the nurse told me. The doctor told you. The nurse said what? The nurse said the doctor said it would be a while. He went home to eat supper and he'll be back after a while. He says it's probably going to be another hour or two. And I said, she's going with you. And she says, what did I just tell you? And I said, I just told you the baby's here. She says, I don't believe that. And I says, well, come and see. So she did. And then here she said, she says, I don't believe it. She had not dilated. She done it all at once. And, he didn't believe it and so she cost $50 to have her. 